recover the sense of spiritual heroism, that we should want to be saints. We should want to be a saint and, and don't settle for second best, for a second or third rate spiritual life. No, I, I want to be a great saint. That's what you've been designed for. And in fact, all of us, Evelyn Waugh said this, he said, all of us, when we get to heaven, if we get there, we'll all be saint so-and-so. Because only saints live in heaven. And so, now it might be through a long process of purification in this life and the life to come, but nevertheless, when you get to heaven, by God, you're a saint. And so that's what we're all aspiring to be, as saints. See, and that's why I tell people, that's a cool thing and a good thing to want, and to want it with all your heart. You know, say, well, I, I want to be the most famous person in the world. Well, that's stupid. I want to be the most, uh, uh, the wealthiest person in the world. That's a waste of time. But I want to be a saint with all my heart. Off you go. That's a great thing to desire. I'm in front of this grand and glorious basilica dedicated to a very simple woman, also one of the strangest and most extraordinary of the saints of the church, Thérèse of Lisieux. She was a cloistered Carmelite nun who died at the age of 24. At the time of her death, she was known only to her family and to the sisters in the convent. And yet, within a few years of her death, she had a worldwide reputation. She was declared a saint and eventually a doctor of the church. When a reliquary containing her bones was brought to the U.S. in the 1990s, millions of people responded. They say when that same reliquary was brought to Ireland, almost the entire country moved to see it. How do we begin to explain this? It has a lot to do with her extraordinary spiritual autobiography called The Story of a Soul. I'll confess that when I first read the story of a soul, I didn't like it particularly. Like many others, I found it a bit overly sentimental, emotionally overwrought. And as a post-Freudian, I was only too willing to see evidence of neuroses and repressions. But then I noticed something. The number of truly great intellectuals who loved Therese. Think of Dorothy Day, Edith Stein, Thomas Merton, John Paul II, Hans Urs von Balthasar, just to name a few. And then when I was a doctoral student in Paris, my thesis director, Michel Corbin, a very brilliant man, was explaining one day to me how the French don't refer to Thérèse as the little flower as we do, but rather as la petite Thérèse, the little Thérèse, as opposed to la grande Thérèse, the great Teresa, who's Teresa of Avila. But then he added this. After many years of reading Thérèse of Lisieux, he said, I realize, elle est vraiment la grande Thérèse. She is truly the great Teresa. I realized I had to take a second look. She was born on January 2nd, 1873, the youngest child of Louis Martin and his wife Zélie, two extremely pious members of the French middle class. By her own admission, Teresa's childhood was blissful. The youngest child, she was doted on by everyone, especially her father. He was her petit roi, little king, and she was his petite reine, little queen. Very early in life, she had the intuition that she would follow her sister Pauline into the Carmelite convent and become a religious. She never wavered from this resolution. The bliss of her childhood came to an abrupt end with the death of her mother in 1877, when Therese was only four. Afterwards, she became withdrawn, moody, as she herself said, sensitive to an excessive degree. Her time at school in Lisieux was not pleasant as she was picked on by her classmates. For the first time in her life, she felt herself, as she put it, weighed and found wanting. The full effect of her mother's death on Therese would appear when Pauline, 
her older sister and substitute mother, decided to enter the convent. Therese experienced a strange malady with both physical and psychological symptoms, some of them quite frightening. She would cry violently, suffer from severe headaches, fall into fits of shivering. Here is Therese's own description of this period. I was absolutely terrified of everything. 